So I found for sale a Scope CRT for fairly cheap, and it's a free JP1, it's very old, and I bought it for collecting, for having something cool, and playing with it, obviously, and I love this technology. Glass, vacuum, high voltage, high frequency, high temperature, for essence that you see in the dark, an electron beam, it's so warm and interesting. And I made a rig for using it. You see? And the heart of the rig is this voltage multiplier here. This is made very cheap and it must make a maximum of 2 kV DC. But there are other voltage taps for other voltages. There are these two potentiometers here. This is focus and brightness. On the brightness potentiometer, there is this uh, small uh, voltage multiplier that must make just 80 volts or kinda for the grid one of the tube. And there is the filament transformer here. This transformer must be very well insulated because it must withstand 1.5 kV across primary and secondary, so better use a late style transformer with a lot of plastic. There is a resistor here, where is it, for adjusting the voltage on the filament. Finally, and there are these two transformers here that I call them the deflection transformers. These are uh, for mains, center tapped for like uh, 115, 230 volts, both the voltages. And the high voltage side goes on the tube and the low voltage side goes to an audio amplifier. And that's basically it. And this thing is made just with uh, transformers, resistors, capacitors and diodes. There are no transistors or vacuum tubes. And for driving the deflection transformers here, follow the cables. Look at the cables. I have here my lab car radio that there are in it actually in the pen drive here some uh, custom MP3 crafted MP3 that I made with Audacity and other things also music and I don't have in mind like proportionality of voltage on the screen like volts per division things like that absolutely not there's no time base also just some effects that are cool in my opinion anyways and I'm happy with just audio frequency at the moment. Okay, let's try this thing. Let's make the famous dot. The cathode is already hot. It makes a lot of light, actually, anyways. Let's push the brightness and we see the famous dot. You see? It's kind of in the middle, a bit high though, but I don't want to correct it because uh, it's too complicated to do uh, with just a simple setup like this. Anyways, let's see the focus. One side, the other side, a bit more of brightness. Okay. Dot again, focused. And yeah. And this dot doesn't seem to be much affected by the transformers in the back. Also, the filament transformer, I put it in a way that it makes a kind of longitudinal magnetic field, so it doesn't affect much the dot, and I'm satisfied at the end. Anyways, let's see with a magnet from a washing machine evacuation motor. See? Yeah, obviously. Yes. Okay. Okay, now let's see some deflection. Anything is set up. We have here 100 Hz, a sine wave on both channels. Let's rise the brightness. And we have a diagonal line. You see? And let's very... Let's... Let's start the track. Okay, let's vary the volume. You maybe can also hear it because it's also amplified on my speaker. Okay, and the cool thing, the cool thing is the balance. Because I can play with the two channels and make it horizontal. Or vertical and it describes a square 
actually. Okay. Okay, now let's see the frequency response of the system. Starting from 50 Hz, you see the limit kind of the diagonal line. Let's see 100 Hz. Okay, let's rise also the volume. 100 Hz. Okay, a bit more. 150 Hz. 440, this is a, a la, and uh, 1 kilohertz, and 10 kilohertz, uh, at 10 kilohertz I believe, it's very also the volume, at 10 kilohertz I believe uh, the transformers go in resonance, apparently. And let's see also noise. I don't know. This is a white noise. And I don't understand why it looks a stereo apparently. Okay. Pink noise. Brown noise. This looks more mono. But uh, not much important anyways. Okay, let's start with the effects now. We have here the famous... Uh, wait a second, okay. Oscillating circle. A classic. Okay, this is made with uh, 100 Hz on one channel and 100.5 on the other channel. And it makes a repetition of two seconds. volume look at this from behind ok now let's proceed and we have here this and this is my best attempt, sorry for the focus, okay. This is my best attempt at making a steel sine wave. And I had a lot of problems because, you see, okay, let's try another one. This is a different version and it makes this noise on the wave. And it also sometimes glitches. Because apparently uh, the uh, MP3 codex of my car radio aren't perfect, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it's something about software and all that crap. And it's uh, uh, more neat. And it's made uh, with the pauses in the oscillation. And also the horizontal is a uh, uh, triangular wave with the varied duty cycle, uh, kind of mixture of triangular wave and sawtooth. It's brighter <laughs> behind. Okay. Okay, now something finally cool. We have music. You hear? And I'll explain you uh, what's the deal with the MP3 in a moment. Let's see. Okay. And the deal with the MP3 is that uh, on one channel, there's all the music mixed with the two channel stereo. And on the other channel, there is a, a triangular wave of 100 Hz. So basically, uh, all the system is done through the, uh, the amplification here, the MP3. Because these MP3s are crafted uh, in audacity. So cool.
Let's see another truck. Okay, let's see now instead with the light. Oh, too much exposure. Okay, and also with the light, you can see perfectly. And the voltage multiplier seems to be uh, powerful enough. It doesn't drop in uh, voltage, apparently. I tested it. This is the brightness level. It's actually proportional with the position of the potentiometer. And I'm sorry that uh, on the phone it doesn't look too cool because it's so freaking green. This phosphor is so green. A bit of focus. Okay, let's uh, change also the balance. Okay, this is basically the music, music volume normal and horizontal bearing because of the balance and I want to show you also because I forgot this and let's vary the balance again horizontal and vertical. It looks like a real scope. And another thing about this effect, because I want to show you nothing important, but the focus makes it a bit more interesting. No, it's not the phone out of focus, it's actually the CRT. Okay, focus it again. And I'm sorry that, uh, or it's my phone that <laughs> it's too potato, but uh, it looks much cooler under the naked eye. It's an incredible A candy. Another track. Focus. Other side. It looks very odd. Final thing. Black light, UV light. You see the hot glue? Oh, come on. You see the hot glue, but the phosphors don't do anything. This is the only CRT that I have that the phosphors don't shine with the black light. This thing has false contacts, obviously. See also on my desk. But not the phosphors. And I asked, uh, I asked the chat GPT about uh, why, and it says that uh, P1 phosphors don't shine uh, with the UV light. It's excited by just uh, an electric charge. So thank you for watching my video and probably I'll make a second video about this project here because I want to make it transistorized uh, for the deflection because uh, with cascodes probably because I want to show more complex things on the screen and possibly also a video from a composite source I don't know if I will succeed and uh, anyways this project is already in my opinion complete 
I don't want to scam my viewers with like a video free of nine, 30 minutes each video. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't do those things. Uh, the bill of materials, the first premises, the first failed attempts. Oh, come on. <laughs> YouTube shouldn't allow that. You, they should take away the views from those videos. It's outrageous. Oh, come on, people. Anyways, at this point, I think goodbye for now.